Alright, welcome back, Red Eyes members. We are talking with Wallace Thornhill from HollowScience.com and Thunderbolts.info, and we're having a very fascinating discussion about the electric universe, and it uh, dovetails with so many various disciplines, and just as uh, Wall's website points out, uh, Hollow Science, it's about the um, the holistic approach to uh, understanding both the universe, but also uh, nature and, and, and life overall, as we've uh, been discussing here in the first hour. And uh, uh, by the way, I wanted to ask you, Wall, I uh, saw so on your website there as well that you actually are going to get, uh, I guess, credited, as it were, from the European Academy of uh, of uh, Science. Isn't that right? Yes, that's correct. Tell, tell us about that. What uh, What is it uh, uh, for? And, and do you feel that it's it's good to get this kind of recognition or or considering how the mainstream um, are treating these subjects, do you feel that it doesn't really matter if the mainstream recognizes you or not? What's your approach <laughs> to this? Well, it's very nice to get recognition for uh, what amounts to many decades of work, uh, which um, have been unpaid. <laughs> mm. And uh, the, the organization... Uh, Thalesio Galilei Society um, or Academy uh, is dedicated to providing support for scientists who've been marginalised. So um, I'm very uh, pleased to have received the award along with nine other people this year. There's another Australian involved uh, from Flinders University in Adelaide. Uh, other people from around the world are receiving other awards. Um, it's an attempt, I think, to try and support uh, those who have been um, pushed aside because their ideas don't fit with the mainstream. And yet uh, one of the aspects of science which is uh, uh, supposed to work is the clash of ideas. In other words, you need to have two, at least two ideas uh, to be able to progress. Uh, right now, we are a monoculture, uh, particularly in cosmology and astronomy and so on. Yes. It's, it's just a big bang and anything else doesn't get any funding whatsoever, um, which is not the way science is supposed to be done. The uh, Oxford biologist Rupert Sheldrake uh, made a plea, public plea uh, in the UK for just 1% of the science budget to be spent on those people who could put up a convincing argument for funding uh, before a, a group of people, not necessarily all scientists, and I think this is another aspect too. The scientists tend to uh, channel the funding uh, to certain individuals and certain projects to the detriment of uh, a broader, uh, a broader uh, study of yes. the subject. Yes. Well, that's a very good uh, point by R Rupert Sheldrake. Indeed, do, do you do you expect, or do you do you ha have a hunch or feeling that mainstream science will jump on the bandwagon as well? Because so many so many times in history as well, ideas and and theories have been hijacked, if if you will, from people who indeed have been pioneering in their fields, and and many of them in many cases as well haven't come from academia or or the the uh, the, the you know classical educate educational background in that sense but they've had yeah. incredible ideas and then later on down the road they, they bring some new guys as it were onto the scene which <laughs> you know, gets the, the claim and the fame for all of that. What do you think? Uh, well history shows that this is what happens um, nine times out of ten and history is written by the winners as they say uh, and the people in positions of power and influence are the ones who are generally the winners. However I, my view is that um, if we can get enough interest uh, from the public that any attempt to, d to rewrite history like that uh, will be um, difficult for the, uh, the authorities to uh, achieve. Uh, so I've always tried to make my stuff readable to the general public and to appeal, uh, and I find that it appeals particularly to engineers. I get a lot of emails from engineers saying, you know, for the first time in my life, I think I understand. <laughs> and, and this is very gratifying because these are the people I want to reach. In, in some ways, uh, the way people are taught at universities now, it, uh, it means they may be the last to know. 
uh, when the revolution comes. Hmm. So, uh, in my view, I have to network as uh, as energetically as I can to try and show people that the universe is understandable, that it is amazing and beautiful and all of those things that we, we know, um, and that it's not out of the reach of anyone to understand. Absolutely, and uh, it's, it's awful as you say, a waste of, well, energy in that sense as well then, and, and mm. lives and times that are being spent. And, and, uh, and, and I guess that's all that you're asking for here as well is the introduction of, of alternative theories into the fields. Uh, again, you know, yes. uh, the monoculture needs to, needs to go in that sense, and we need a diver diversity uh, of ideas instead of this kind of stupid certainty that many of the uh, scientists have in, in, you know, today. Um, yes. Uh, one thing in terms of... Uh, I guess proof as well in terms of uh, the electric universe theory has to do with uh, uh, dis discharge bet between planetary bodies. This obviously connects with mm -hmm. Velikovsky's theories as well in terms of uh, it connects with catastrophe and things like this as well. But there even have been, I, I guess, then more modern um, versions or, or examples of this. For instance, I recall when you guys covered the whole uh, uh, Temple One story back when they sent a projectile. Yes into the uh, onto the moon surface surface and so forth on and you guys predicted yes. what would happen maybe you can tell us a little bit about that uh, Will. that was probably one of my more spectacular predictions when the uh, deep impact uh, uh, space shot was uh, given the go-ahead uh, i wrote what i expected would happen and that was about four years or several years anyway before the actual event <clears throat> and uh, the main thing i said was that um as the copper projectile, which was to plow into the comet nucleus, as it approached the nucleus, there would be a lightning flash between the copper projectile and the comet, and that would precede the actual impact. And that's precisely what happened. Um, and I remember I was tuned into the NASA control room uh, when this was about to happen, and the astronomers were saying, uh, we don't think we'll, you know, there's a good chance we may see nothing because they were unsure as to whether the impact would actually create much of a uh, an outburst. And the other thing I said was that the outburst would exceed ex all expectations because it was an electrical, there was electrical energy involved in the outburst and that the jets would move around as a result to, of the redistribution of charge on the comet nucleus. All of these things happened. But the most surprising one was the flash before the impact and... Uh, I thought that, in fact, that was picked up by Wired magazine and my uh, website collapsed under the uh, traffic uh, <laughs> that day. Um, Time magazine here in uh, Australia uh, rang me and wanted to do a story on it, but um, the editor must have uh, phoned an expert and uh, the story was scotched. Hmm. And this is one of the problems we face, uh, that w we really need to have in uh, journalists, we need to find a few who have the uh, courage to do real investigative journalism in science. Right now, the, all they do is uh, parrot what's handed to them by the um, uh, publicity departments uh, employed by the universities. Hmm. Uh, consequently, it's, you know, it really is sad. Um, Halton Arp himself said that uh, as far as he was concerned, investigative journalism in science is dead. <laughs> uh, and th that's true, in my opinion. Uh, and, and yet it could be so interesting if people were to uh, question what scientists say with the same um, diligence they do um, you know, politicians and other um, so-called authorities in, in our societies. Yes, absolutely. Um uh, one thing that this dovetails with is, is the idea of, of comets. As well. I mentioned the moon 